Hello everybody, thank you so much for hanging out here with me. My name is Alex Castillejos and today here in Just Be Blessed, we share hope, we share love and we share people's testimonies and I've left in messages and how God is good. And tonight I have a very special guest is David Machado. That's right. And he is evangelist, share the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, through the United States and I'm sure international. And let me tell you, we're going to find out about his life growing up uh, in the Christian home. By the way, in the Christian home, it, it was some circumstances that it was without his control growing up. Uh, it was some drugs abuse. It's gonna, uh, we're going to find out more about his life. And let me tell you, this is a live show. And do my favor, uh, share this link because I know uh, uh, there are going to be people, they're going to be blessed just listening, his testimony, his life. And, and please share this link because, you know, there's a lot of stuff in social media. Let's bring some positive and let's bring some hope to this crazy world. All right. So let's invite him. OK, let's invite brother David. How you doing, brother David? Thanks so much for being here and just be blessed. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you all. <laughs> great, great. Uh, I know it was it was kind of like, uh, uh, you know, I follow you in, in social media and I was like, I'm going to ask him, you know, maybe he has a testimony. Right. And, and I remember I, I, I sent a message and, and and I was like, yeah, I have a testimony. And when you share the little description of your testimony, I was like, whoa, I, I, I'm, I'm so excited to hear to know more about about you because I mean I don't have that relationship with you I just just follow you and 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 Instagram and I know you you share you know uh, uh, the gospel uh, revelation seminars and all the stuff so and I'm very excited right now uh, uh, thanks so much seriously I really appreciate it absolutely thank you for having me yeah so to find out about more about you and uh, how was growing up? I mean, you you share in a little description that about your life. It's like uh, you grew up in a Christian home, but we want to find out uh, how was home, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, everything was wonderful. Jesus, it was at home. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I actually have some uh, pictures that I'll share with you of my yeah. little childhood and sure. how I grew up. Um, right here on on the screen, my my parents met in the church. They were Christians. Okay. Um, my father's Mexican, my mother's Puerto Rican, okay. and um, they met at church um, and they gave birth to myself and my little sister. Her name is Christina. Okay. And uh, it's about three and a half, four year gap between us. And um, it was wonderful. I mean, you know, this is our family portrait. This is the only one of the only pictures that I found where my whole family's actually together because you're going to find out in just a little bit what happened to this to this family. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a wonderful home, a loving home. Um, you know, my parents loved my sister and I, they still do. And, and even though we grew up going to church and, and singing hymns and doing all these things, I, I have to be completely honest with you that my, my God was not Jesus Christ. Um, it was basketball. My father is a diehard Los Angeles Laker fan. Mm. And so naturally I just, whatever my father loved, I loved. And so from a very young age, he handed me a basketball and I would play basketball. Um, I would I would dream about basketball. Basketball was my life. I wanted to become a professional basketball player. And uh, I honestly was looking forward to, to being one of, you know, playing in, in the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. and, and that was my dream in life um, because very early on, I had a very... Um, I had quite a traumatic experience and later on, I guess, in my in my testimony and sharing with you, I could kind of get into what happened. But usually around the age of around the age of five or six years old, everything was going well. Mm. I was loving life, loving my parents. And when I was about five or six years old, my parents happened to get a divorce. Mm. And that's where things turned bad very quickly. Amen. Um, after that divorce, things didn't didn't go well at all. Mm. Wow. I'm so sorry to hear that, you know, I mean, and, and what you mentioned, I mean, you're sharing this, you know, beautiful picture, you know, and a child uh, with her, with his parents and the beautiful girl, you know, your, your sister. And what you share the, 
it was the only picture that I can remember. I mean, that I, I have with me that the, the four of us that were together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a little tough, man. I mean, just to hear, I mean, just to see the picture, but that was the picture like way long time ago, you know? I mean, it was not like five years ago. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the reason why that was the only family picture, I guess, that I was able to find was because of the divorce in such an early age. Um, we, you know, things really took a turn for the worse after that. Um, yeah. After my parents got divorced, um, I, I lived with my mother for, for a number of short years. Yeah. And unbeknownst to my mother, um, my, she had some family members that were addicted to drugs. And I remember one night I was, you know, we were sleeping in an apartment that my mother was sharing with one of her family members. And it was my mom, my sister and I sleeping on the same bed. And the other family member was on the opposite side of the apartment in his own room. And I just remember one night I just was kneeling down to go to bed and just saying my prayers. And all of a sudden, um, as I was kneeling down right there by the bedside to pray, I heard a voice say, David, get out just a, a huge, very clear impression saying, David, get up and get out. And it was, it was like a man's voice and there was no man in the room. So I immediately opened up my eyes and I looked at my mom and I said, did you hear that? She was like, no, what, what do you mean? Did I hear what? I, I said, some man, someone said to get out. And she said, mijo or son, it's going to be okay. Just, just get in bed. It's going to be all right. Yeah. And I remember I just got into bed with my mother and my sister and fell asleep fairly quickly. And to this day, this was, you know, 27, eight years ago. I still remember this. I was sleeping on the bed. I fell asleep and I had this dream where there was lots of angels flying around saying, David, get up, mm -hmm. David, get out, David, get up, David, get out. And I remember waking up to screaming and yelling. There was this, this, the atmosphere that we were breathing was polluted by the smell of drugs and, and I could hear my family member right there in the living room screaming and talking in different voices. And it was hugely dramatic. And I remember I look over to my sister. She's crying. My mother's crying. She says, David, go lock the bedroom door. I run over there, lock the bedroom door. I, I run back because I'm obviously scared. We escape through the bedroom window. We run over to a, one of someone in the same apartment complex that my mother knew. And from just a short distance away, I could hear my family member yelling and screaming. And all of a sudden, I heard this big bang. And this family member ended up breaking the, our bedroom door and screaming, where are you? I'm going to kill you. Where are you? I'm going to kill you. So he was a, so, a, like an influence? I mean, I mean, or he just demon possessed? I mean, what happened? Well, he, he, he was under the uh, intoxication of drugs. Oh, okay, uh, he was okay. doing some hardcore drugs. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some other things, but it was it was definitely something I never seen in my life. Mm -hmm. I heard different voices. I heard demonic things, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it was all because of the drugs that he was in. And so from a very early age, I'm talking about six years old. I've had to escape from the bedroom window several times because a family member was trying to kill us. I I, I would literally have seen some of my family beat their own sibling almost to death right before my very eyes. And so I, as a little boy, mm. I, I was just quite aware of the danger, even with family and several times having to, to, to run for my life. Wow. I'm and, so sorry. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, that does, that, that, that is not a, a childhood for a, a uh, 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 for a child. Right. I mean, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't wish it upon anyone. And, you know, finally, I thought things were going to get a little bit better. My my mother ended up getting her own apartment complex. And so I thought, man, our problems are now over. Uh, we no longer have to live with anyone else. We're safe in our own little bubble now. And I was just happy. I was just thankful. I thought years life old? was going to get better. And you I remember one day. Life starting to get a little better. We, we were having our own house. We had our own space. So I could run around. I could go to bed at peace knowing that nothing bad was going to happen. But one day, something did happen. Um, my mother, I remember this to this day. She handed me a cookie. She said, David, it's time to, to go. And so I was the first one out the door. I mean, you give, you, you give your child something sweet, they're going to leave. You know, they're going to do whatever you want. So my mom gave me a cookie. 
I was so happy. I was the first one out the door. I think my mom was still getting my little sister ready. And immediately upon exiting our front door, I, I must have taken just a couple steps out, admiring my cookie in my hand, when all of a sudden, there, there was bushes right in front of our, I guess, our apartment, uh, apartment door, just about maybe 15 feet away. There was bushes that lined that area up. And there was a man that jumped out of the bushes. He had one hand behind his back. And, he ha and with his other hand, he was like, hey, come here. I have something for you. Come here. I have something for you. Well, I have never seen this man. So I was not, <laughs> I was not anxious to go towards him at all. And he saw that I wasn't moving. And he kept saying, come here, I have something for you. So I thought maybe he wants some of my cookie. So I extended my cookie out to him. And I said, would you like a bite? And he's like, no, I don't want your cookie. I have something for you that you're going to love. Come here. Well, I wasn't moving. Alex, I was not moving whatsoever. So he began to move towards me. And right about when he was arm's length away, he moved his other hand from behind his back. And he had a knife. And he said, I said, come here. And at that exact moment, he was about to grab me when my Puerto Rican mother um, walked out of the front door. Now, I don't know, Alex, if you know any Puerto Ricans. Yes, um, I've been to Puerto Rico but, four times. Okay, so, you, you, so you've been there plenty of times. Yes. I don't know if you've ever seen an angry Puerto Rican, particularly an angry mother that's very defensive over her cubs. A bear. But this man who was much bigger than all of us, she sees her son about to be abducted by this this guy with a knife in his hand my mother saw his eyes he saw hers and that brother turned around and took off running and my mother took off running after him now i like to tell people that he's very lucky that my mother didn't catch him because she meant business yeah well anyways um you know alex i must have been around seven years old and can you imagine this like I have been nearly killed by several of my own family members. Mm -hmm. Now we finally move out. We're on our own. Mm -hmm. And shortly after we're on our own, I'm almost abducted from our very own front door by this stranger. Alex, you know what this did to me? Wow. I never wanted Secure. to leave my house again. That's right. I'm secure. I never wanted to leave my mother's presence again. Mm. I didn't want to, I didn't go out to play with my friends, my cousins outside. I was petrified all along thinking that this man was going to come out when I least expect her, when I'm away from my mother, and he's going to finish me off like he intended to. So by the age around seven or eight years old, I've had to face, nearly face death from my own flesh and blood. And now I almost was abducted and killed by some stranger. And at, at a very young age, I thought, what's the point of living? I thought, it probably is better just to die and end my life. And so that that's how I was early on. It was a, it was just a traumatic um, childhood. I could say to say the very least for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like I say, you know, uh, I'm sure you didn't want to leave your house. I mean, you want to be insecure. Uh, think about these guys going to show up again and wow. Seven years old. I mean, yeah. I mean, you super, I mean, seven years old, I mean, you can tell Superman exists and you think, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, you believe in that kind of <laughs> stuff, right? I mean, and then can you imagine right. something like real, these kind of, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and speaking, <laughs> speaking, speaking of Superman, Alex, I, I, you know, I, I was all into Batman was a big deal back in my, my childhood and Superman mm -hmm. and. Never once did Superman or Batman ever come to my rescue. But there was someone that that did step into my life mm -hmm. that did rescue me to a certain degree from the the danger that I was in. Mm. Um, when I was about eight years old, my mother dropped my sister and I at my father's house. And my father never has had a father figure in his life. He was adopted. Mm. And so he, she, she drops us off at, at his house saying, look, I can't, I can't afford, you know, I've done everything I could. I just can't do this anymore. Mm. And so she dropped us off at my father's house. And my father is a very good Christian, um, loves the Lord and everything. And so when she dropped us off, my sister and I were kind of afraid because we didn't really have a deep relationship with him. But mm -hmm. he, he, he says this later on, but he said, David, um, that, that night when you were dropped off, I went into the room when you all were asleep and I just prayed to God and I said, Lord, 
Um, I've never had a father in my life. I've never had an example of a good father. But I'm looking to you for your help wow. to be the best father that I can because you have never left me. Mm. And so I mean, what my a trust, father saw you know? how traumatized I was. Wow. Say that again, Alex. No, what a trust, you know. I mean, what a trust. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it takes like like you need to go to your needs and say, you know what? I mean, I got two children right there. And, and, and please, God, help me. Great. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he, he was he was absolutely clueless about how to raise children mm -hmm. other than the first years, obviously, that he raised us. and He did a wonderful job. But, mm -hmm. you know, we were a number of years out out living with my mother and. Anyways, Alex, I was traumatized. My father said I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would start running around saying, please don't leave me. Stop. Leave me alone. Don't leave me. And, and my father would have to grab me and hold on to me and say, David, I'm right here. I'm not leaving you. I'm not leaving you. And so my father saw that I had gone through so much. And so my dad said, David, it was I was, I was we were with him for about a year or two. And my dad said, David, I'm going to you're about to turn 10 years old. I'm going to give you the most powerful weapon this world has ever seen. I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, I'm going to give you the most powerful weapon the world has ever seen. I'm like, you're going to give me a bazooka? And he's like, a bazooka? No, it's much more powerful than that. And then I said, oh, dad, you're going to give me a grenade launcher? He's like, what is that? And, you know, I kept mm -hmm. listing off all these weapons yeah. I saw on TV or on our video games. Mm -hmm. And and he said, no, David, it's, it's going to be much more powerful than that. Mm -hmm. So I remember I turned 10 years old. I was the first one up. I woke up my sister. My dad said, it's my birthday. It's time to open up the most powerful weapon. And so my dad's a big jokester. He likes to joke a lot. And so he had this huge box. And there must have been 15 or so boxes in that one box. And finally, I get to the actual box where my gift is in, the most powerful weapon. And do you know what it was, Alex? I ended, I ended up opening that gift. And here I am on the screen, 10 years old. Mm. And it was a book. My dad gives me this book. It's called the Bible. Amen. And I opened it up and it, you know, I I wasn't really interested to tell you to tell you for sure. I I mean, to be honest with you, it was thousands of pages, no pictures in this big book. Mm. And I was thinking, 10 years old, you really think how is this the most powerful weapon? And my dad looked at me, I'll never forget this. He said, David, this is the most powerful weapon this world has ever seen. This book has saved more lives than any of your modern day superheroes. More than Batman or Superman, this book has the power to save. And I know, David, this book can help you. And Alex, I wish that I would have started reading that book and, and really gotten interested in it. But to be completely honest with you, I didn't open up really with an interested heart. I didn't open up the Bible for another 10 or 11 years after that. Wow. Wow. So that was like another 10 years of a lot of teenagers years that Jesus, he was not there, you know, kind of like, uh, how was it? How was those teenagers? You know, because you got the Bible, you got, you oh, got the man. weapon, bro. You got the weapon. I got the weapon, but the weapon's only good if you open it up and let it into your heart. That's true. Um, just like any other weapon, you got to, you got to open up. You got to put the bullets in. You got to you got to engage with it. You use I it. was not engaged with the Bible whatsoever. And I remember when I was 13 years old, mm. um, I had my older cousins invite me over to their house. And, um, you know, we were celebrating my birthday at my cousin's house. And they're like, all right, David, hey, you're 13 years old. You're a man now. You want to spend the night? And these were older cousins. I was like, spend the night with you all. And they were like, yeah, you want to spend the night? And I said, man, that's awesome. Yeah, I would love to. And so I asked my dad and my dad was like, sure, you could, you could spend the night. Um, mm. You could spend the night with them. And so I was, oh, I've always been early to bed, early to rise kind of a guy. So it must've been eight thirty, nine o'clock. And I was like, Hey guys, I'm going to bed. And they're like, going to bed. It's nine o'clock. What are you thinking? And I said, well, it's time to go to bed. I'm tired. And he's like, no, men don't go to bed at nine o'clock. And I said, well, why? And they're like, no, men go to bed like at one, two in the morning. I'm like, well, I don't know if I want to be a man. And so they're like, no, no, you're a man now. And they took me over to the computer. I thought they were going to introduce me to some video game or something. But do you know, the very next thing, they threw a DVD into the computer. Uh -oh. And I was, for the first time in my life, introduced to the world of pornography. Mm. Now, Alex, this was repulsive to me. 
I remember as soon as I started seeing the images and everything, I just started screaming and I started turning away. Like I was disgusted mm -hmm. of this stuff. Yeah. But my cousins literally bound me to the chair, kept my eyes open, covered my mouth, and they forced me to watch pornography for however long it was. It felt like eternity. Mm. And from that moment, Alex, yeah. I became addicted to this terrible vice for the next eight, seven, eight years mm. that really just fed, fed me in all the wrong ways. Yeah. And so by the age of 13 years old, I have gone through physical abuse sexual abuse. I, I have gone through a lot of terrible things. And Alex, I wouldn't want to wish this life upon anyone. Oh. But I want to tell you something. Instead of turning to the Bible for help, mm -hmm. instead of turning to God for help, I turned to the only thing that I that was my God from the very beginning. And that was basketball. Mm -hmm. Basketball was my God. It was my idol. That's that I, you know, this is the staple center. This is where the Los Angeles Lakers played. I would go and watch them play my whole life. I just wanted to become a professional basketball player. So in high school, I started practicing every day. I started, you know, preparing to try to enter into the, to the NBA. And I remember my, I believe it was my senior year in high school. And we were playing the top team in our division. We were ranked four. And they were ranked number one. And we needed to win this game in order to make it to the playoffs. And the score was 60 to 60, 30 seconds left on the clock. And I remember the coach calls us up to the huddle. It's our possession. It's all our ball. And, he's, and I remember he looked at us and he said, listen, someone's life is about to change. And so I started listening. He says, do you understand that there are reporters from different news stations here in this gym? Do you know there are scouts from different schools in this gym? Whoever makes the last shot to win this game, your life will never be the same again. And Alex, this was it. I mean, this is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been working for. Mm. I thought if I could get to the NBA, all my problems, all my issues would be gone. Wow. Well, do you know, Alex, mm. I was a shooting guard in that particular game. I had to hit seven three pointers mm. and I said to the coach, give me the ball. And the coach was like, made a play. They did it. The point guard took it down all the way. He got down to, to, um, to half court. He threw it to me on top of the three point line. Mm -hmm. I heard the audience shouting, counting down. Finally, it was down to five, four, three. I faked the guy like I was going to shoot it. I put him in a popcorn machine. I ran down the center aisle. I heard two. One, and right before the buzzer went off, I sh let the ball go. And you know what happened? You made it. The ball, the ball went in. That's right. And the whole stadium came crashing down. Um, they were lifting me up. I was on the front pages of newspapers. I, I had recruiters talking to me about going to different colleges. Maybe I watched basketball. that video. What'd you say? Maybe I watched that video. <laughs> you know, sometimes on YouTube, <laughs> you watch those videos, you know, like in high school. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wish I, a family member or someone was recording it. Um, I know there was someone recording mm -hmm. it from the opposite team, but I'm pretty sure that they did not put that one on mm -hmm. YouTube or anything because they lost. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was, it was in my mind the greatest day of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, Alex, whenever I had a basketball, I forgot about all the trauma and all the pain that mm -hmm. I went through. But I want to tell you something, Alex. Yeah, a life without Jesus is so empty. That's true. Um, you know, I had what I thought everything. The very next day, I'm wearing my fancy Leatherman jacket. You know, that jacket that, you know, high schoolers use. They buy it so expensive and they never wear it after high school. Um, I remember I, I was walking senior with my jacket, my last name, Machado, on the back. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to be the talk of the school. Everyone was just going to be talking about it all day class teachers are just going to cancel their their classes and just talk about the game that's what i thought was going to happen yeah. but do you know alex everyone seemed to have forgotten what happened that day no one mentioned anything i mean i was bringing it up to people i knew everyone was there but it was like nothing and i thought in my mind if if this is what life is all about you win some and you lose some and game over you may be at the top of the game but yet you're forgotten i thought how is this even wonderful? How is this even something to be coveted after? So Alex, you know what happened? 
instead of pursuing my dreams of making it into the NBA, I just started getting into more trouble with the law. I started making terrible mistakes. I was on foot races with cops. I've had police helicopters look for me. My senior year in high school, instead of graduating with my graduating class, I was going to be going to jail with a felony on my record. Um, it was just a living mess, Alex, because a life without Jesus is, isn't worth living. And finally, I had hit rock bottom, hit the lowest of my life. Mm. And I didn't know what to do with my life. I was already my first year in college, had no purpose, had no idea what I was going to do. And something happened. Mm. I was given a flyer that changed my life forever. Oh, wow. The but flyer let me tell you, was before, this one right up here. Before we're going go, before we're gonna go to that, I have somebody uh bernice coffees coffee yeah says that yeah she has a, a newspaper about it who, who is she <laughs> is your is your friend or that that actually is my mom yeah oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i was like how hey, she mom, has how a newspaper <laughs> yeah my mother has all the newspaper articles she Great. framed it put it in a in a book um and she would show it to me often when course, i once i graduated proud. from high school yeah of course <laughs> all right well <laughs> Uh, you need to take a picture of the, the, the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, I probably should. I, I probably should ask my mother for a copy of it so that I could put it on our presentations and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's true. Okay, I just want to share that with you. Uh, well, thank ahead. you. So you were saying that, you know, uh, high school was crazy and all stuff. I mean, cops was looking for you. You were doing all these crazy stuff. But when I watch your videos on YouTube, man, I mean, when I watch your videos and, and Facebook, it's like, are, are we talking about with two different people here? Because that guy <laughs> looks so with a big smile, uh, so kind. Uh, I mean, I mean so perfect guy, you know, like anything went wrong, you know, but uh, now I hear you, your story and it's like, I mean, unbelievable. But I cannot, yeah. I, I cannot wait until that moment uh because even in the, i mean growing up i mean your childhood it was so terrible i mean i'm sorry to say that but I, i'm not saying it was so bad because uh, the love of you of your dad and your mom you know it was there but it was so traumatic let's put it that way you know uh yeah but jesus he was he was later on um uh, uh, but let's talk about it what happened when some flyers show up yeah, yeah. So someone ended up giving me a flyer. It looked exactly like this. I used to play basketball with this guy. Okay. And he said, hey, David, you got to go hear this rapper okay. um, rap at this church. And I used to love rap music. So I was like, this guy's going to rap at church. I'm going. And so, you know, at that time, I wasn't really interested in going to church at all. Didn't really have a relation with God at all. And so when this guy gave me this flyer, talking about some rapper rapping at church, I was like, hey, that seems kind of interesting. So I thought I was going to go to a rap concert at church. And boy, was I wrong. I remember I get to this church, walk in, it's completely packed, huge church. And I see this tall African-American guy, bald head, goatee, in a suit. And I thought, man, I never seen a rapper rap in a suit before. This is going to be interesting. You cannot wait. And so I remember... Beat. <laughs> that's right how is he gonna do that so i remember i just was waiting for him to rap but that brother didn't rap at all he just shared his testimony and the brother basically said in the early 90s he turned out an eight hundred thousand dollar contract because he found god i mean he was on bet he was on rap city mtv he was on all these major stations about to make it big in his life and you know what mm. He said he was willing to give it all up because he found God. And I thought, what is this guy doing? Mm. In my mind, I thought money was the ticket out of a terrible, dramatic life. And he turned it all down because he found Jesus Christ. Mm. So I started listening. At first, I was really angry because he wasn't rapping any, any lyrics or anything. And, but now he got my attention. So I started listening to him. At the very end, Alex, I was so moved that... I'm gospel by Jesus Christ. And he made an altar call. He says, whoever would like to accept Jesus as your personal savior, come to the front. This was on March 5th, 2007. And I thought to my mind, there's no way. 
There's no way God would even want me. I've gone too far. I've done too many bad things. What would God do with me? I'm a nobody. I have nothing to offer him. I'm nothing but a big sinner. And I remember these thoughts started coming through my mind. And, you know, Alex, that was the devil just whispering in my ear, just as he's whispering to maybe some of your listeners today, mm. saying that, you know, what's the point of living? Just give up. You're, you, you don't have a purpose in life. Mm. Just give up. You know, no one loves you. Yeah. Those kind of thoughts were going through my mind. And immediately, Alex, when those the, the devil was whispering those things in my mind, the next thing that preacher said was, it doesn't matter what your reputation is. It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you. He wants you. Amen. And he and he has a purpose for you right now. Just come to the front. And Alex, instead of walking reverently to the front, I ran to the front. Mm. I ran over there and I I just surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And on March 5th, 2007, marked the best day of my life. Alex, I didn't know any Bible verses, but I knew of a God that gave his life for me. And I wanted to get to know him. And so that was like the turning point in my life. And it was just incredible. I'll never forget that day. Amen. I mean, you don't. I mean, you don't forget those dates, right? I mean, like your baptism, you get married, or something major things, you know. And I mean, if if I ask you, like, what was the date or what day it was uh, of that game, the basketball game? I'm sure you could tell me. Oh, that was Friday night, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something like that. Uh, just, yeah, you know, I, I probably. I, I could probably tell you what day of the week it was, mm. but I have no idea what day of the, I don't even know. I know it was in probably 2005, six, okay. but you know what, Alex, somehow I've forgotten all those things mm -hmm. back that happened to me, Yeah. but I'll never forget those things that really meant something to me, like right. accepting Christ into my life. Like, like Paul, mm. when he says, you know, I look back at those things as, as rubbish. Mm. And I look, I press toward the mark. Mm. That's exactly how it's been for me. Like the, that old life was just a waste of time. I've, I've forgotten it. I've been healed from it. And, you know, there's so many things that God did from that starting point, March 5th, 2007 to today that are just miracle stories of what, how God changed my heart, how he's changing my heart, how he's led that have just been absolutely incredible. So I have this question for you. Uh, sure. So how ch God changed your life? You know, I know you've been telling all this stuff, you know, I mean, all what you went through, what you say, you know what? I'm here, Lord, uh, because God needs to change this heart so he can trust you over here for the ministry yeah. you're going to be. Because in the moment that you went over there, like, hey, you know what, Lord, here I am. You were not thinking you're going to be in front of the church and share uh, scripture, you're going to share hope to other people that are, you know, going through the difficulties, mm -hmm. you know, what you were through. Yeah. So tell us. Yeah. I mean, honestly, there was this peace mm. that I, I received that night that I've never experienced in my whole life. Mm. There was this peace that, that just flooded my soul at that moment that I never wanted it to leave me. Alex, I couldn't sleep at night. I would, I would, I would see things running at me. I, I was traumatized, Alex, all my life. Mm. And it wasn't until that moment where I experienced this peace, someone hugging me, hugging my heart, yeah. just saying, David, I'm here. I'm not, I've never left you and I'm here to change you. I'm here to help you. And Alex, it was the most life-changing, beautiful experience I've ever had. Mm. Wow. Amen. I'm going to say is basically at that moment, I had really no knowledge of the scripture, you know, for mm. like 10 years, I didn't pick up the Bible to read it for my own interest. And so I had a lot of questions. So I started asking people at the church. I was like, Hey, I got a lot of questions. Is there anyone could study with me? And there was this guy by the name of Mike and I was introduced to him and, and man, he started giving me Bible studies every single night. It seemed like, and I would stay at his house till very late, almost till the morning. Remember, I'm not a, a late, night owl but it was it was incredible i was getting answers to if there is a god why if there is a good god why do bad things happen to good people and and getting all my questions answered that i had and he had this little ministry that that he traveled with and he asked me to join him and he said david you'll be able to share your testimony you'll be able to share what god has done for you and you'll be able to preach and alex at that time 
public speaking was my number one fear. I hated it. Mm. Never wanted to be a public speaker, pastor, teacher, nothing. I hated being in front of people. I just despised it, didn't like it. And now I'm being, I'm joining this little ministry and I'm, you know, very quickly being introduced to how to do this. Now, I have to say this. This was my first year in college. It was a public university. And I was taking a speech class because I wanted to um, overcome the fear of public speaking. And during this time, it was so it was almost more than halfway done with the semester. And we were going to be giving our most important speech. It was a persuasive speech. Now, Alex, this was crazy because the, the teachers up there asking, okay, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to persuade us about? They got to me and I said, I'm going to persuade you all that the love of God is real. Now, Alex, I just met God like maybe 10 days before, you know, you know, before, you know, after this guy asked me this. Mm. So I just hardly knew anything. And now I'm telling this public school, public college, I'm about to, my persuasive speech, my most important speech is going to be persuading you all that God's love is real. Now, I was no idea what I was going to do, but I was so in love with Christ mm, at right. that moment. I just, that's all I wanted to talk about. That's right. And so the day came when I was giving that public speech, the most scary, one of the most scariest days of my life. And I remember I'm standing before this huge class or this class and I went up. It was an eight minute speech. At the end of the eight minutes, Alex, people were crying. Mm -hmm. I remember there was this Buddhist guy that came up to me after the class period. And he said, hey, David, I could tell that Christ is real because of you and your testimony in your life. Can you study with me the Bible? Can you share with me about this Christ? It was so incredible that I, I started a, um, a, a Christian club for the university to study with people from all walks of life. And here I am, you know, feeling the call to public ministry, mm. doing the very thing I was most petrified of doing. And it was just absolutely incredible. I, I loved every moment of it. And, you know, mm. some people, Alex, think that as soon as they accept Christ into their life, life is going to be easy. Mm. Oh, it's going to be peachy and rosy and <laughs> you never have to stress out again. Mm. Alex, I want to tell you something. The moment you decide to choose Christ in your life, mm. the devil is going to attack. Yeah. But the Bible says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. And I remember I was changing my 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 music. I was changing those things and I asked a friend if I could borrow a blank CD because I just purchased the music and I wanted to put it on the CD. And I, and I put the CD into my computer. I was about to burn some music when all of a sudden, guess what was on that CD? Uh, preaching. It was not blank. That's, that CD was a DVD and it had pornography. Oh, and wow. Alex, it was as if my whole life just came crashing down upon me. I felt like I felt so dirty. I felt so sick. I felt so sinful. I remember I fell down to the ground. I pulled that DVD out, broke it in pieces. And I said, God, do whatever it takes to give me victory over this thing. I cannot do it by myself. Mm -hmm. It's like coming at me. It's coming mm -hmm. after me and I can't yeah. run away from it. God, help me. Yeah. Amen. And about two days later, I find myself in the hospital. I can't breathe. I wake up early in the morning, can't breathe. I feel like there's a knife penetrating my right side. Mm. And my father takes me to the hospital. What happened? I had a spontaneous pneumothorax, which means my right, my right lung collapsed spontaneously. Wow. No medical reason whatsoever. And I remember I'm taken to my room. Doctor said I could be there for weeks. My mother was there and I said, Mom, you're not going to leave me, right? She said, no. I'm going to be right here by your side. And I thought, that's good. At least I won't be alone in this place. The nurse came in and said, visiting hours are not over. Your mom's got to go. And um, my mom looked at her and said, I'm not a visitor. I'm, a, I'm his mother. And I said, that's right. My mom even gave birth to me in this very hospital. And she, the nurse looked at both of us and she said, I'm sorry. You're no longer in the children's hospital anymore. You got to leave. She was pointing to my mother. So they literally took my mother out. And Alex, I felt so alone. Here I am. I just accepted Christ into my life. I thought life was supposed to be getting better. I thought life was supposed to be getting easier. Now I'm in the hospital all alone. I can, I have one lung that works. The other one doesn't. And I thought, God, where are you? What's going on? Mm. And 
Alex, I began to cry. Mm. I felt so alone. And maybe there's some people today that they may be serving the Lord Jesus Christ or they may have a relationship with Christ and yet they're feeling the attacks. They're feeling attacked like I was that day. Mm. I remember, Alex, I put a towel over my face and I began to cry. Mm. And I heard a voice. Mm. The voice was clear. It said, David. And Alex, I was like, is this God speaking to me? Again, I heard David. I was like, I think this is God. So I was about to respond, Alex. When all of a sudden I felt someone touch me on my arm. And I said, is the Lord touching me too? So I took the, the towel off of my face. And I thought it was God. And it, you know what it was? It was my pastor. And I looked at him and I said, man, I thought you were God. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was like, no, I'm not God. <laughs> but I do have a message from God. Mm. He says, David. I just want to let you know that God has not left you. Amen. He is right here by your side. He will not leave you, David. And in fact, this trial that you're going through is going to lead you closer to him. Mm. Oh, Alex, do you know what that did to me? Dude, that's praising God, man. Wow. He, yeah, Alex, Amen. I was so thrilled. I, I mean, mm. right on time, this pastor shows up right in the moment of my darkest mm. despair, my Christian walk. And he tells me a message from God. Alex, you know how excited I was? The very next morning, I have to tell you this. I don't know if you've ever, I had a tube connected into my lung, right on my side, to a machine. I picked up my machine early that morning. And I said, I'm going to go visit my neighbor. So in my room, there was a curtain, right? I don't, you've been in the hospital. There's usually a curtain that separates you and the other patients. Yeah. I opened that curtain up and there was this guy there that um, had open heart surgery. His chest was still open. And I'm like, whoa. And he's like waking up. He's like, who are you? And I'm like, oh, my name is David. I'm your neighbor. And um, can I sing you a song? And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, can I sing you a song? I have one lung, Alex. And I got this machine. I'm like, can I sing you a song? So I sing him a scripture song. And Alex, that man begins to cry. Mm. He begins to weep. Mm. And he says, young man, I don't know what you know. I don't know, but I don't think you know what this means to me. Mm. He says, I've been in here for months, and this is the first time in months that I feel like I have hope. Thank you so much. Alex, you know what I did? Great. I grabbed my machine, and I went across the room. No. I left my room. I went to the next room <laughs> and there was two ladies in there. I'm like, good morning, everybody. Uh, and I start God. singing to them. Man. <laughs> I start singing to them and they start crying mm. and they say, young man, what are you doing? Mm. You, what's wrong with you? I said, well, I got one lung, but I want with that one lung. I want to praise the Lord. Mm. He's mm. given me life. He's given me breath. He's given me all things. They began to cry, Alex, and they said, you know what, young man, we've been in here for a while, and this is the mm -hmm. first time we've ever had feel like we have hope. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Alex, it's, oft it's oftentimes during our darkest times in life, mm. oftentimes during our darkest times of life, where we could share the greatest amount of light. I like to tell people our greatest disappointments in life can be our greatest appointments with God. And mm. Alex, I was discharged out of the hospital earlier than expected. My lung improved faster than anyone thought imaginable. Amen. And from that day on, Alex, I knew that no matter what happens in my life, God will always be there for me. Praise God. Amen. So immediately after that experience, I went on my first mission trip to the Philippines. Mm. Alex, you know how public speaking was my number one fear? Yeah. I was now speaking to over a thousand young people. Mm. And this is where I felt convicted that this is what God wants me to do for the rest of my life. And Alex, it was the greatest. I, I felt like I had purpose. I felt like I had peace. But I want to tell you something. I want to tell you about a dream I had. In this dream, I dreamt that I was in heaven in the city of God, the new Jerusalem. And after the thousand years, we were coming back down to earth. 
And after that, I remember seeing the wicked resurrected, Revelation chapter 20, and I saw through those transparent walls someone on the other side. I saw my little sister lost. Mm -hmm. And I knew that she was lost because of me. Mm -hmm. Because of my terrible example that I that I lived for so long. And Alex, it was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had a nightmare. And in your nightmare, you are literally crying. You're literally, literally weeping. Well, Alex... I woke up and my tears were literally coming down my face. It was so real. Yeah. I remember I walked over to my sister's room, knelt over her, and I began to pray. I said, God, if there's one person I could win to you, if I could win one person to you, God, let it be my sister, please. And Alex, after several months later, this is my sister right here on the screen. She gives her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, praise God. And it... It was amazing. Now, Alex, I want to tell you something. Serving the Lord Jesus Christ, life just keeps getting better and better. Look at this next picture. Do you know who this is right here? This next picture here, that is my sweet mother. I was doing an evangelistic series in the very town that she lived in. Um, and that's you, and Alex, right? I had the, you baptized What did you say? You baptized her? That's you? I no. baptized my own mother. I like to tell people, Alex, that my mother held me when I was born, but I held her when I when she was born again. And um, yeah, she I was did a, a Bible prophecy series. She <laughs> came to the meeting, and at uh, the very end of the meeting, she decided to accept Christ mm -hmm. into her life. And Alex, it has been a dream. Serving the Lord Jesus Christ is like a sweet marriage that, mm -hmm. that you never have to say goodnight to, you never have to say goodbye. Jesus is always there. I've been married for almost six years. We're about to have our first child. Literally, Alex, in about 10 days is the due date. Um, we're about to have our first child. And I want to tell you something, Alex. Mm -hmm. There is nothing better than knowing Jesus. Wow. Okay. It doesn't matter what any one of your viewers is struggling with. Mm -hmm. If they lived a drug abusive life, if they've been sexually abused, drug abused, they feel like they have no purpose, Alex. Jesus can give you an identity. He could give you a purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Alex, the very family member that harmed me the most, that nearly killed me? I remember all I could think about as a child was getting bigger so I could kill him. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something, Alex. Mm -hmm. When I accepted Christ into my life, God gave me a supernatural love for him. Mm -hmm. God basically told me, David... Nobody could ever do the amount of evil to you that you have done to me. Yeah. And I, yet I love you. I forgive you. Go do the same. I started studying with m my family member. Alex, that family member went to go drug rehab. He went over and gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And for the last 10 years, he's been going to different prisons all over, talking about how Jesus has set him free. Wow. My worst enemy became my best, one of my best friends. <laughs> that is the power of the gospel. Wow. And that's what Jesus can right. do for everyone. Wow. I mean, your story is like, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect that. I mean, that's a, do you have a book? I mean, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that's incredible. And, and, and let me tell you guys right now, uh, please, I'm going to take this time because brother David has a ministry. I'm going to be sharing. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. You can be blessed watching his videos uh, uh i'm gonna share that with you right now please go go visit his youtube channel uh it's called revelation of love of course you know of love of god yeah when well, he was sharing preaching at the uh, college uh revelation of love ministry please go uh on youtube and give it some love you know subscribe and, and watch it and share it share these uh, small clips they he has, and I'm sure it's going to be powerful ones, uh, videos. I really been blessed uh, and the videos. And also, uh, uh, you have um, a website, right? You can they, they find out more about about, about the yeah, ministry, right, right? Right on the screen, there's a website right there. It's okay. called revelationlove.com. People could go there, and we have presentations there. We have Bible study guides. Um, you could look at our schedule where I'm going to be preaching at next. 
We do classes. Um, we do all kinds of stuff. People could subscribe to our newsletter okay. to find out what we're at, what we're doing right there on revelationoflove.com. Um, they could email us at info at revelationoflove.com and you could get a hold of me. We would love to hear from you all. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, please, please go support uh, Bro David. And, and let me tell you guys, I mean, you guys going to be not just listen a person I'm, I'm not saying you know professional seminars and and all stuff they don't do but, but i mean you had a story of i love story this you know i love story how jesus say you know what for this mess i'm gonna bring you love and and then about you you, you your enemy became your best friend. i mean wow just wow god is good right a merciful Amen. God. Yes. Powerful God. Yes. A personal God. Amen. Wow. Amen. I I've been blessed, man. I mean, I'm not kidding you. Uh, I didn't know your story. Thank you so much for sharing here and just be blessed. I mean, Th thank you so much for having me. I've been blessed to be able to share God's goodness with you. Amen. Amen. So I have two questions for you before we're going to wrap this up. Uh, one, please share with us your favorite Bible verse. <laughs> I'm sure it's many, right? But come on, share with us. Yeah, I have my Bible here. Okay. Uh, but I have a lot. But I think the one of them that speak the most to me, it's found in a very small book. It's in Micah chapter 7, verse 7. And it says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I love this Bible text because it shows that if we just look to God, we will find him. No matter how far we've fallen, he is there to bring us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wow. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Thank you so much. And what is your final thoughts? And I know you've been you've been talking to the audience, you know, if, if you listen to this story and stuff like that. But please share with us your final thoughts. I mean, how growing up and those difficult times and and, and you were feeling those the emptiness and the, uh, the you need love. I mean, you went through sports and then addiction or pornography and. And I don't know if it was drugs there or not, but I mean, it was it was crazy in those moments. Eight years, block, boom, right? Yeah. Eight years yeah. until Jesus show up. Uh, please share with us your final thoughts for those people that are watching your story. Well, well, first of all, I want to say that um, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You could do nothing without Christ. I was able to rise above the abuse only because of Christ, and he turned my mess of a life into a message. And so I want to share with all of you that are there right now that are listening. If you are struggling with pornography, if you're struggling with abuse in the past, don't let it define your present. Jesus could give you a fresh start. He could allow you to rise above the abuse and have true freedom forever. If you are struggling with um, abuse, if you are struggling with the addiction of pornography or anything for that matter, please reach out to me. Um, go to our website. Um, I have different series on how to overcome uh, abuse, how to overcome the addiction of pornography. And so do feel free to reach out to us. We will be more than happy to help you out and to encourage you to find victory in Jesus Christ. So don't give up. Just give in to the Spirit of God and find the freedom that only He can give. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much once again, Brother David. Uh, uh, I was blessed seriously i was i was so blessed listen to your story and i'm sure those people they're gonna be blessed too uh please don't hang up i'm gonna finish this video okay sounds good all right uh okay guys i hope you were blessed because it was amazing story i didn't expect that it was it was amazing how good a merciful god and told you think it's all crazy your life God's going to bless you. God's going to return, change that uh, painful, painful life in something amazing. But let me tell you, thank you so much for your support here and just be blessed. And this video is going to be available next week in our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed or something, go enjoy those stories, people's stories and uplifting messages. 
go subscribe and thank you so much for your love here and our YouTube channel and also uh, Patreon. If you would love to uh, support us here and just be blessed, uh, please be a Patreon. And so uh, I would like to build some websites and I to bring more 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 things for for you guys. Uh, thanks so much for your support. And my name is Alex Castillejo here and just be blessed. Uh, and I just want to say uh, thank you so much for for being here. And I will see you next week. Bye bye.